Hi folks, this is Melvin from optoproductions.com and today we're gonna continue with a deep house track. In the last video we made a basic drum track, we added a bass and a piano. In this video we're gonna continue the track by building out the arrangement. Alright, so this is what we made in a previous video. Okay, so let's continue that ID and let's add some more sounds. Right now we've got harmony, we've got rhythm and a bass, but we're missing a melody. And I'm gonna use tension for that. Tension is great for creating stringed instruments or percussive instruments. This kind of synthesis is also called physical modeling. I'm just gonna lower the volume. Okay, and then over here we can select the exciter, so I want a hammer in this case, because I want to create a percussive plug. So I'm just gonna fiddle with some knobs to see what we can come up with. just gonna change this control and this means that if I play higher notes the damping increases with it and the damping decides the length of the sound alright let me then grab some reverb and in this case I do want to apply it to the track itself because it's very specific for this sound A small size. Maybe a moderate decay. that just fiddle some knobs until you'll find a cool sound then I'm gonna add a resonator and these are basically multiple filters with high resonances so if I press play you'll notice that it sounds a bit like a sitar it's literally resonating then I just need to make sure that the frequency is set to the same note as our key so A and notice if I play an A now the resonance is at its strongest. So I can change the level per resonance. And here you can change the pitch relatively. So if I set the mix to 100, Okay, and then with the decay you can change the resonance length, then you've got the width and a main low pass filter. So I can mix this in slightly and if we want we can put this before the reverb. And now I want tension to 
react a bit more to how hard I'm playing. So if I change the velocity over here. Oh, then now there's a difference. I'll just turn down the volume. And I'll also lower the reverb a bit. All right, now let's try to find a melody. Oh, and I'm just gonna tie this knob to the velocity as well. So it sounds a bit darker when I play softer. So the final thing I'm gonna add is a delay. I'll just darken it a bit. I'll change the right delay to a quarter note. And I change the left delay to a dotted eighth note. Reduce the dry wet amount a bit. Alright, let's record something. Oh, let me just activate a count in, which you can do right here by clicking the arrow. Count in one bar. Okay, now I can play around with the velocity. I'll just move this over here, by the way. That's a bit easier to edit. And I'll turn this on. And then I'll duplicate the rest of the instruments with Ctrl or Command D. I do think I'm gonna quantize it a little bit. Ctrl or Command Shift U. That's set to 60, let's change it to 70. Notice that you can do a lot with only velocity. It has a huge impact on the sound. Okay, and that's it for the plug. Then I want to add an additional bass sound. We've got a sub bass, which is playing really low and long notes. But I want to add a more rhythmical bass. We've used analog here, but in this case I want to use operator. Then we can create a cool FM bass. That's very typical for this genre. Right, so the first thing I'm going to do is turn up the level on the second operator. Okay, so we're dealing with frequency modulation and operator B modulates operator A. Alright, so let's record something. Let's quantize that 80%. Let's check out the sound. So over here I can change the frequency or actually the ratio. I'll keep this envelope as is, but I do want to change this one. Thank you. 
just gonna lower the high notes. It's cool if the first note is a bit longer, then it grooves a bit more. Okay, let's lower the overall volume. And now you might wonder, are these two bass lines not interfering with each other? They're basically playing the same note, so they do reinforce each other. But I can maybe sidechain the sub bass to the rhythmic bass. So I'll just copy this compressor on the sub bass and instead of the kick we'll sidechain to the FM bass. So now I'm ducking the sub bass with the FM bass. But since it's a short sound we can reduce the release. I actually want to add a tiny bit. Another way to create space is to add a EQ. But I might be afraid I'm cutting away too much. Actually, I don't even notice a big difference. Of course, in solo we do, but it's important to always compare in the mix. I don't hear a difference. So, this doesn't hurt, and it actually saves some headroom. A tiny bit of sidechain and a high pass. It's all about tiny corrections, but in the bigger picture, this makes a huge difference. Okay, we've got an FM bass, a plug, and the last thing I want to add is a pad. And pads we can easily make with Ableton's wavetable synth. Like always, I'll first turn down the volume. So a pad is made up of long notes. And it's usually a very filtered sound, and used more in the background, like a kind of bed. So what I can do is use a sawtooth, and then I'm gonna attenuate all the high end with the filter. But first, let's come up with some notes. can actually sustain a lot of the notes. Oh, I stumbled a bit on that uh, last one. I'm also going to add that little pause over here, but I still miss an option to cut notes in Ableton. So we just need to go the long route. Add a gap over here. Okay, let's have a look over here. F, C, E maybe. Let's check what the bass is doing. A D, so an F might be in the way, but G could work. Mm -hmm. 
and the plug plays um, A, so that's an option. Yeah, that could work. We can always change the notes later on. Let me just change this one. Okay, let's have a look at the sound. I'm first gonna open up the filter with envelope two. So if you click on the filter and go to the matrix and it will appear here under target. So we want to send envelope two to the filter. So I'll just click on the cell over here and drag up. That's way too much. And you'll see that it moves from this position to the maximum position. So it's better to set the minimum position a bit to the left. So I'll set this so you'll barely notice it. Then I'll go over to envelope 2 and lengthen the attack. But since I added really long notes, we won't hear anything. So I'll have to split these notes. But I can also reduce the grid size and just insert a new note. It's a bit of a workaround. I do want to increase the release on the amp envelope. I need to do the same thing right here. Let's check. Then let's activate the unison option. I'll set this to classic. Unison copies the notes and detunes them. Three is plenty. But we also have a second oscillator, which we can turn on. And I can change the octave right here. Can lower the volume a bit. Okay, then we also got an LFO that I want to send to the filter. So if we go to the matrix, filter, LFO 1. And we can increase the rate a lot. I'll turn off retrigger so the notes aren't influencing the start of the LFO. Okay, a bit less. Then we could activate a second filter. Both filters are set in series mode. So first we get rid of the high end with filter 1. And then with filter 2 we can do the opposite. We don't really need that sub low end at all. And then you might think, yeah, I just uh, enabled oscillator 2. But if I turn this off, you do hear a difference. And that's because of those harmonics I talked about in a previous video. But let's increase filter 2 a bit. We can even add some resonance. Or over here. Alright, let's then add some reverb, or maybe I can even use the echo effect. This also has an inbuilt reverb. Okay, then over here we can add some character, so a wobble for example. 
And this adds some sort of random modulation to the delay time, like a detuned tape delay. And then we'll just add a tiny bit. Now we'll remove some low end from the delay. And here you can increase the reverb length if you want. Okay, let's hear how that sounds. I'm gonna lower the LFO amount even more, but you can see it goes in steps. So if I want to increase the accuracy, I just need to hold down shift when dragging. And if I want, I can also add an LFO to filter 2. And here we will really slow down the rate. Oh, but I need to flip it around to the bottom. Oh, yeah, and uh, turn off re-trigger. Right, a little bit. Just to add some more movement. Okay. And yeah, as a final plugin, we can add a chorus. I'll remove some low end. It's subtle, but it adds some additional movement. Okay, one more tweak. It's all about the details, but I'm just gonna reduce this modulation a bit. And increase the attack a bit. Yeah, and then we can sidechain this again. So if I just copy the compressor from the bass, the one responding to the kick. Yeah, and I can increase the overall volume now. Or increase the gain over here. Okay, well, finally, I do want to reduce some of the low end with EQ, just to be sure. Even if there's not a lot going on. Yeah, and let me reduce the Q some more. Maybe some of this mid lows a bit. Alright, now let's have a look at the arrangement. Let's say we want to make a pop version or a streaming version for Spotify. Then we need to keep it at around 3 minutes. And as a start I can just select everything and duplicate it until we fill 3 minutes. So there's no need for DJ intros and outros, but we can of course create some sort of build up. So the plug for example, we don't need in the beginning, so we can get rid of that. And I don't think we need the bass. Just like the pad, and this one. Okay, and I think for around 16 measures, we can get rid of everything except for the pad. And then we'll just start over here, with the bass at least. Okay, then let's have a look at the drums. 
One thing I'd like to do is to filter the kick in the beginning. And an easy way to do this is to just duplicate the kick. So just drag it with control or command. And I've got a copy. And then I can just add a filter on the rear end or on the cue. But you just need to keep in mind the exact position of the effect. So not here, but over here. Then you can increase the EQ a bit for some resonance. And if necessary, I can get rid of some of the high end as well. By the way, is it on the right kick drum? No, it isn't. I put it on the wrong kick drum, so I'm just gonna move it over to the other kick drum. And I'll just rename this to kick filter. Okay, I'll just get rid of this. And then we'll move the notes from this kick over to the other. And I think I'm also gonna mute the shakers. I'll also select the hi-hats by clicking on the note over here. And then I press on zero to mute them. Okay, so that's a good start. And then I'm just gonna glue these uh, clips together by right clicking and choosing consolidate. Oh, and I'll just get rid of this snare over here. Okay, so we can get rid of the shakers. And maybe we don't need to hide it over here. Let's check. Yeah, we don't need a shaker right here. But I do like to have the hi hats in here. I do want to filter the clap, so I'm gonna add an auto filter. And if we then right click on the track and choose show automation, then we can draw in some points. So we can slowly filter up the clap. I'll just turn off the grid with control or command four. Okay, so now it's slowly introduced. Okay, and I'm just gonna remove this snare. It's a bit distracting. And about the percussion. Yeah, we can also filter this. So let's add an out filter. Yeah, let's do the same. Show automation. And we'll also slowly increase it. And I won't increase it fully until only the last point. So we've got a bit more contrast. And you know what? I'm just gonna do the same for the hi-hats. I can of course apply it to the whole drum group, but I might want to filter it separately later on. Yeah, and also here, not to the max, until the last point. Okay, and then this shaker can go eight measures later. And now we can proceed with this, so we can automate the pad. Filter one, show automation, and we can also ramp this up. Yeah, and also for the plug, just a lot of automation. It's just a good way to slowly introduce elements. Way better than simple volume automation. All right, I'm gonna continue in a similar fashion. It's just a matter of turning on and off different elements. So in a later video, I'll show you how I did this. All right, that's it for this video. You now know how to make a basic arrangement of a Deep House track. Next week, we're gonna continue by Diving deeper into automation, we're gonna add transition effects and we're gonna make a basic mix down. Like always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them down below. And I'll see you next week with another tutorial.